This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battlebright Sage. So Rook has kind of been a hot topic since he was buffed in late April. He was always a pretty decent champion for stomping in solo queue, but for a long time he didn't see much use in pro play. But over the course of a month and a half, he went from seldom ever seen to being played in almost every game. Naturally, Stunlock toned him down because the buffs were clearly too much. But with this swinging pendulum of balance where he gets buffed so much and then nerfed again, it kind of makes you wonder, was it worth changing him in the first place? So let's take a look at the numbers and see where we were then and where we are now. So the first thing to mention is that we as a community have focused a lot on Rook's raw damage output. But as you'll find out later, Rook's dominance was not just down to damage. But still, because it's the first thing people seem to blame when they talk about Rook, let's first look at the damage numbers. So, in the interest of keeping things simple, I am going to simplify Rook's combos significantly. As far as I'm aware, nothing has changed to affect his mouse 1 damage, so I'm just leaving that out of the equation. First, let's go back to the pre-buff Rook in April. There are obviously a bunch of different variations to Rook's combos, and the numbers will look different depending on the order in which you do it because of armor break. So, although it's not a totally accurate picture of Rook's true burst, I'm just going to ignore armor break for now. So back in early April, if Rook landed his Rush, Incap, Boulder Toss and then Crushing Blow, he would do a total of 72 damage ignoring Armor Break and any M1s that you throw in. That's 24 damage from a max range Rush, 12 damage from the Incap, 18 damage from Boulder Toss with Crumble and 18 damage from Crushing Blow with Weapon Break. If you included armor break in this particular combo, it would be 75 damage. So fast forward to the first round of Rook buffs in patch 1.5.2. The damage on Rush and Crushing Blow was increased, while the in-cap damage was reduced. The cooldown was also reduced on Crushing Blow, which is important, but we'll come back to that later. With the same combo we were using before, you get 28 damage from a max range Rush, 6 damage from the in-cap, 18 damage from Boulder Toss with Crumble and 22 damage from Crushing Blow with Weapon Break. So in this patch that same combo was doing 74 damage without Armor Break or 78 if you include it. This patch was when you started to see a lot more of Rook in solo queue. Not only were they doing more damage in their combos, they also had a shorter cooldown on their only iframe. He certainly gained a bit of traction in the pro scene in this patch, but the Rook meta hadn't really started yet. Then patch 1.6 came. They actually reverted some of the damage changes a little bit, but actually, thanks to a few other changes, this was the patch that caused the Rook meta. So let's look at what happened and why it happened. First off, the damage on his Crushing Blow and Rush were reduced, and the stun duration on both was also reduced slightly. A few other things were actually nerfed as well, like a slight reduction on his self heal and an increased cast time on his in-cap. So, so far that's all nerfs, and if we look at the same damage combo, it now does 26 damage on a max range rush, 6 damage on the in-cap, 18 damage on boulder toss with crumble, and 20 damage on crushing blow with the weapon break right. All in all, this combo now does 70 damage, or 74 if you include armor break. So that's actually slightly less damage than before all the changes on this particular combo. But if you did a slightly different combo like Boulder Toss into Rush into Crushing Blow, that would be 67 damage including Armor Break before all the changes, and in 1.6 it would be 73. But if you threw an in-cap at the end of that combo, the damage evens out between the two patches. So damage was pretty much just shifted away from the in-cap and towards his other abilities. So what's the main difference between this Rook and the Rook no one really wanted to play in pro games before all the changes? Well, the shift in where his damage comes from surely plays a part, and the cooldown reduction on Crushing Blow also helped for sure. But both of those things happened before 1.6 and it wasn't until this patch where he became so prevalent. So why did Rook become so dominant in this patch? Well, the thing that really changed things for Rook was adding the stun to his base kit. This was changed in 1.6, and it freed Rook players up to take another right, Endurance. I haven't actually mentioned Endurance up until this point because it wasn't a commonly picked right for top players. 
It was actually kind of a weird one before. At the free to play launch, this right reduced the cooldown of rush by one second and a further three seconds if you missed the rush. Yes, it rewarded you for missing your abilities. So high level rooks never really took this because, you know, you want to hit your rush. But at some point, and I can't find out exactly when because it's not mentioned in the patch notes, it went from a right that rewarded you for missing to one that rewarded you for hitting. So in 1.6, endurance reduced the cooldown of rush by one second and a further two seconds when you hit the rush. This gave Rush a 5 second cooldown if you managed to hit it. Before all these changes, Rush always had an 8 second cooldown with the standard rights. When you look at the numbers between 1.5.1 and 1.6, Rook had a similar amount of damage in a full combo. If anything, he did slightly less damage with an in-cap combo in 1.6. But what really changed things for Rook was his ability to actually stay in the fight. So while Rook lost a tiny bit of self healing and stun duration, he was able to use his mouse too more often, rush a lot more often thanks to endurance, and he did more damage outside of the in-cap wombo combo. So when you really look at it, the whole community was complaining about Rook's numbers, specifically the damage from Crushing Blow and Rush, but really that wasn't entirely what caused the Rook meta. It was how often he was able to do it. So just to clarify, at the start of Season 1, if you missed Rush, you had to wait 8 seconds before rushing again. So if your opponent escaped, you really needed to get that counter hit. If you couldn't bait people's abilities out before rushing, you could end up in a pretty bad situation as Rook. And that exact conundrum is what made him kinda meh at high level play. But with a 5 second rush, he was able to switch targets and chase down a lot more easily. I mean, most champions have a much longer space cooldown than 5 seconds, so it was pretty hard to keep Rook away from you. So the damage numbers were probably an issue, but it was his newly found ability to actually stick to you that created the problem. So that brings us to now. In the most recent patch, Endurance was nerfed slightly, so his rush cooldown is now 6 seconds when he hits you. On top of that, Weapon Break and Crumble had their damage bonuses removed, which definitely affects his combo damage. They also reduced the damage reduction from Weapon Break from 33% to 25%, and Rook's damage reduction from Giant from 30% to 25%. Essentially, that affects his ability to trade one-on-one, -on -one, among a couple of other things. So that same combo we've been looking at throughout this video, with the same rights, now does 26 damage from the max range Rush, 6 damage from the in-cap, 16 damage from boulder toss and 18 damage from crushing blow. That's 66 damage without armor break. So that's definitely a lot less than what he started with before all the changes. With the most recent changes, there is a chance though that people just skip the crumble right. Armor break on boulder toss is nice, but without the damage bonus, it's less tempting. I know some people are trying out rook smash instead, which would bump the combo back up to 70, which is almost what it was to begin with. And if you do take that, his damage combo basically just ends up where it was to start with, just where it comes from has shifted a bit. So that brings you right back round to the whole point of this video. Was it really worth touching Rook in the first place? Rook's viability at low ranks has never really been in question. He's always been a very strong champion up to a certain point. The issue for Rook was at higher ranks where people could abuse his reliance on getting his counter hit. It's easy to say things after we've seen the results, because hindsight is 2020. But when you really look at everything that's changed, the damage shift from the in-cap combo may or may not have been necessary. But the two changes that made Rook suddenly viable at the highest level was giving his crushing blow a stun as part of the base kit and making endurance reduce the cooldown on rush hits. In all honesty, those two changes are what made Rook so dominant. So maybe we could have skipped all the other changes and just done those two things and balanced from there. So if you're a Rook player and you're wondering if Rook is trash now, honestly, I would say no, I don't think he is. Sure, his damage doesn't look quite as good and endurance has been nerfed, but compared to the free to play launch, Rook has a much better chance of sticking to his opponents than he used to. With certain builds, you could probably do the exact same damage that you were doing in the first place, only now you do have to work a little bit harder to do it. So all in all, it was a bit of a balanced roller coaster, but it feels like we're finally closing in on a happy medium for Rook. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more battle right guides, news and discussion. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some unique rewards, then head over to patreon.com slash battlerightsage. And don't forget to check out twitch.tv slash battlerightsage. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.